Hey there everyone, this is Ray Carcillo with Classic Game Room, and today we are looking at X-Men Origins Wolverine from Activision. We all know the stereotype that most movie-based video games are pretty bad. And when a movie is as bad as X-Men Origins Wolverine was, you expect even less from the corresponding game. But to be honest folks, this game was actually really good. Borderline great. The same basic storyline from the movie serves as the plot here, except the entire game is told in flashback, as if from Wolverine's memories. Which of course provides the first of many plot holes, since the only problem with this is that if he lost his memories at the end of the flashback, then how can he remember the story to tell it? Anyway, that just hurts my head. Aside from this obvious flaw, the video game is chock full of action and goes far more in depth with the Weapon X program than the movie did, and we don't have to suffer through flashes of Hugh Jackman's butt cheeks in this. <laughs> in addition to fleshed out movie sequences, there are a few continuity surprises along the way that make this game a far superior product to the movie. The most beautiful thing about this game though is its look and design. Wolverine's body takes real time damage and heals as he runs around, much like the end scene of X-Men 3 when Dark Phoenix is burning him and he keeps pushing through. You can see straight down to his skeleton at some points, and Activision even took the time to make sure that in the flashbacks to Africa he doesn't have adamantium claws. At least they follow that part of the continuity and wait till he actually receives the adamantium at Alkali Lake. The stellar graphics and bountiful amount of enemies for Wolverine to rip to shreds does cause some lag in the gameplay though, but aside from this and the overly linear levels, the game is as technically sound as it can be. With literally hundreds of ways to tear your enemies apart, you truly feel like you're playing as a living weapon as you can use your claws to impale, lacerate, and decapitate in ways that only Wolverine can. The music is taken straight from the movie as well, and having Hugh Jackman, Lee Schreiber, and Will I Am reprise their movie roles for the game was superb, and anything less would have never worked. No Ryan Reynolds though meant not having any Deadpool until the final confrontation, and this was a bit disappointing because I was really looking forward to his insane banter and wit, but I blame this more in the movie script's writing, or lack thereof. No, Logan, she isn't. Striker. Aside from the loosely connected plot, the only other down point to this game is the replay value. Although there are some collectibles and several difficulty levels, there really isn't anything to bring you back to this once you make your way through the campaign. And of course, because of the aforementioned healing factor, most enemies really don't pose much of a threat, and so although technically sound, the game is also rather simple. Despite this, with the addition of the right characters from Wolverine's past into the game that weren't in the movie, and some of the most fun boss battles I've seen in some time, including a battle with Wolverine taking on a full-sized 50-foot sentinel. Yes, folks, sentinels were worked into the video game story, and it made more sense than anything from the movies. And you have one of the best action gaming experiences out there. If you can look past the subpar movie plot at its heart, I can highly recommend X-Men Origins Wolverine to you if you can get your hands on it.